Hello, everybody, and happy Friday to you. Welcome to Facebook Live. If, you, if this is your first time visiting or you are, have visited before, let me take a quick minute to introduce myself. My name is Anne Marie Heil. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in San Antonio, Texas. And I'm excited to be here with you today for some live stamping. You can find me over on my blog at stampinand.com. And if you're watching this video on Facebook or on YouTube, all the links to my um, social media, my online store, all of those will be found in the description of the video. So um, I'd love to have you follow me on all the social platforms. And um, if you're watching on Facebook and you're not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I'd love it if you'd follow me over there. And if you're watching on YouTube, I'd love for you to follow me on Facebook too. <laughs> so, okay, so we're going to do some live crafting today. I come to you live Friday at 4 p.m. Central, and um, we're going to make a really fun card today. It is super hot here in Texas. I'm sure it's hot where a lot of you guys are, and I'm kind of uh, loving this oceanfront stamp. So we are going to make a... Um, a really fun beach card with this because I'm in a kind of beachy mood because it's like, you know, 156 degrees here. So <laughs> I thought, what better, what better way to celebrate the heat than to make a beachy card? <laughs> so I don't know if it's 156, but it's 100 and something. I don't know. I think it like feels like 110. I'm not really sure. Um, hello, hello. Hi, Terry. Hi, Don, Jeanne, Deb, Karen. Thanks for sharing, Nora. Appreciate that. Um, Nora brings up a good point. If y'all would like to share this video, I would be so grateful. I would love to get more of your crafty friends watching today. Um, so I would love it if you would share the video. I do something fun for sharing. For everybody who shares the video, I put you in a drawing to win the card we make today. So um, we're going to be giving a drawing uh, prizes away here in just a minute from last week. And um, so I'd love for you to share if you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube. Um, just spread the word. Um, let your friends know they can watch some crafty fun. And um, I would really appreciate it. So if you leave a comment that you shared, you have until the next time I go Facebook Live in order to enter into that drawing. All right, so as I mentioned, um, I, real quick, I do have a host code here, so if you do need to pick up any Stampin' Up! product, you can shop in my online store. The link's in the description of the video, or you can find it at stampinand.com. If you shop with the host code, you get some extra goodies from me, and I would love to help you if you need any Stampin' Up! product. All right, so here's what we're gonna do today, guys. We're gonna make a fun beachy card with Oceanfront today, but I'm going to do some giveaways first, from last week and then I'll give you an overview of my club that's coming up tell you about another event coming up I have at the end of the month and um here we go so let me turn on the light here a little glare there and we'll get started so last week on Facebook Friday if you missed it we made this really fun fun fold card <laughs> it's a fun fun fold card <laughs> and hi Paula I'm so glad you caught me live welcome hey Nicole and GN thanks for sharing you guys hi Anita thanks for sharing Andy <laughs> and Anita <laughs> and if I miss your comments I will definitely go back so if you weren't here last Friday for Facebook Live, we made this fun, fun fold card. <laughs> and this one I love, and it is so fun and easy to put together. So if you missed last week's video, you can catch the replay for this on Facebook or over on YouTube. You guys will be so surprised. This looks really intimidating, but it's not. So, <laughs> so if you'd like to check out the replay, check it out. This is made with the Zany Zoo. I love this little leopard in her tutu, and it's a fun little birthday card. And the great part about this card is the way you cut the card stock, you can make two cards at the same time. So I don't know about you, I always need birthday cards, so what a great way to do that. So last week, this was the card we made with the little tutu, and um, I made a variation of it. Let me show you. So I cut out another little critter. So that was the card we made on Facebook Live, and then I just went and took another little critter. I took this cute little... Uh, raccoon and then I did some fun like sparkly stars in place of the flowers so just goes to show any critter will work and here's even another critter you could even sub out the the little bear playing the uh accordion <laughs> so there's like lots of options here for the critters so anywho I just wanted to show you I made that variation after Facebook live last week and I was just like I just I have to show you um oh good Elizabeth got her kiwi card yay I'm glad you got it um 
So for sharing the video last week, I put everybody's name into a drawing to win this cute little dancing leopard. And our winner is Nora Taylor. Nora, I think you're here. Congratulations. You won. Now, Nora, I, I'm pretty sure I have your address. Um, I know I do from like a couple months ago. If it's changed, can you update me? Or if you don't mind, if you wouldn't mind just sending me a message here on the Stampin' Ann page or sending me an email. You can message me here on Facebook too. That's totally fine. But um, if you could just shoot me a message just so I have the right address because it has been a little while. So um, I just want to make sure I have the correct address. But congratulations, Nora. You won. And then I had a second little leopard card. I had one made and then I made one. <laughs> on the video so I ended up having two and um same exact card super cute and that went to a commenter so everybody who comments also gets entered into a second drawing so Roz Wolf you want a card <laughs> congratulations Roz Roz I have your address um so I will get this one in the mail to you Nora if you would just confirm with me that would be great and congratulations, you two. You won some happy mail. We've got some dancing leopards headed your way. So congratulations. And we will do the same thing again this week. The card I make on the video will go to one lucky sharer. And then our um, everybody who comments will be entered into a second drawing as well. Now, I do want to draw your attention, guys, if you're not signed up for my newsletter um, or my weekly email list, rather. Um, <laughs> I would love for you to do that. I'm going to put a link here in the comments on Facebook Live. If you're not already signed up, I would love for you to join. And here's the reason why you want to join. Um, because it's awesome, number one. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, if this is your first time visiting, I can be a little snarky, okay? So <laughs> we like to laugh here, and we like to kind of have a good time, like, poking fun. So, um I please understand I'm kind of being funny. Um, so um, if you're not signed up for my email list, um, every week what I do is the project that I make on Facebook um, Friday. On Saturday, I will send out my weekly newsletter. And on my weekly newsletter, um, you will have all of the upcoming things that I have going on. And also you'll get some creative inspiration. So you'll get a project sheet for this project, which will have measurements and a full supply list. And um, it'll be pictures of the project. And this particular one, there's some extra photos on there about putting it together. But the video really serves as a tutorial. So there'll be a link to the video there too. So this was last week's project. So my email is going to go out tomorrow to all of my subscribers and it's going to be today's project that we make and you'll also get last week's project. So just to clarify, I always do this on the video. Today's date is July 14th. So if you're watching this at a much later date, just keep that in mind. So July 15th, I'm going to send out my email to my subscribers, it's going to get today's project from July 14th and last week's project. And then next Friday, you'll get the project that we make Friday and this week's. So, so just to clarify that. Hey, Diana, nice to see you live. I'm excited. Um, so if you're not signed up for my email list, I'd love to have you join. Um, not only do you get to keep up with everything that I have going on, events, classes, stamping up specials and things like that, but you also get some free creative inspiration too. So check it out. All right. Next up, I want to talk to you guys about my monthly club. It is July 14th. There are six days. Well, maybe five at this point. No, six. <laughs> I can't keep up. Six days left to register. July 20th is the cutoff date to get my monthly club, which is called Cultivated Creativity. And... If you're already subscribed, I'd love for you to share in the comments. Um, and if you're not subscribed, why aren't you subscribed yet? It's a great club. If you're looking for a box of creative inspiration to come to your door every single month, it's a wonderful DIY paper crafting kit. All the designing and prep work is done for you. You will get five projects, um, four cards, one non-card, and a non-card can be anything from a gift box to a treat holder. Um, gosh, we had a little lip balm purse one month. Um, there's all kinds of fun things <laughs> that could be a non-card. So there are five total projects. You'll get the materials to make all of them. We do focus them around one bundle. And hold on. Because I moved the bundle. <laughs> Okay, um, this one's Cultivated Creativity. I moved it <laughs> across the room. This one's Cultivated Creativity focuses on darling details, 
arguably one of my favorite bundles in the Stampin' Up! catalog. And so you will need the bundle to create your projects as they are designed. Now, if you don't have Darling Details, that's fine. You can sub with something else you do have, but keep in mind, the project will use the stamps and the dies in this bundle. So your projects might not look identical, but I'm sure you could use them if you wanted to use something that you do have. We do, I do have some subscribers who like to sub out with what they have and make some very beautiful cards with them too. So what do you need to create cultivated creativity kits? You need the bundle, as I mentioned. If you don't have this, you can add it onto your club, your club kit. You will need ink and you will need adhesive. And then you'll have, I will send you the rest of everything you need to put your projects together. You will get up to $20 in consumable product, meaning paper, maybe ribbon, embellishments. There's always something fun in there. Um, <laughs> and whatever is in the treat box, um, I include in your kit for you too. So you're going to see that in just a minute. And I always put some extra little goodies in. There's a six bonus project that will be included for you. You'll get the tutorial for the six bonus project, but I'm going to make that one for you. That's my thank you, one of my thank you gifts. And then another thank you gift that I send there's always something to snack on in your kit. So there's always a little treat in there for you. I try to make it fit with the theme of the kit, but sometimes, sometimes depending on the theme, I, it might not, it, it, it makes sense to me. It's still something good to snack on, but, um, not everything has something that coordinates, so, <laughs> but I try. Um, so hello, Patricia. Elizabeth said the most awesome kits ever. Thank you, Elizabeth. Guys, if you're not signed up for Cultivated Creativity, give it a try. It's a monthly subscription club. You can stay as long or as short as you'd like. If you do stay for six months consecutively, you do get a six-month gift, and that is for every six months consecutively you stay. So if you stay for 12 months, you're going to get another gift, <laughs> um, and a lot of people have been receiving their six month gifts um, recently. And um, I've gotten some really good feedback. So I love that you guys love them. And um, I just like to give you some some extra stampin goodies to have some fun with. So it's up to $25 worth of stampin goodies in your um, thank you gift. And I don't know, there might be extras in there. You, you never know. You just never know what you're going to get. <laughs> but I always try and make it fun and good. So um, I would love to have you join Cultivated Creativity. Now, there are links in videos here on Facebook or on YouTube. Um, you can register. Like I said, you just go ahead. There's a link to register. You fill out your information, and then you'll get the payment profile to be sent to you. You just complete your payment profile, and then you're set up to receive the kit. Now, you stay until you cancel. So, again, if you sign up today on the 14th, you'll be billed next month on the 14th for next month's kit. So, if you're, And you do get a preview of it, so don't, you, you do get to see it all in advance You do, you know to make a decision if you want that kit or not. Um, and if you don't want the kit, that's totally fine. You just need to go in and and click off your payment profile. That's it. Or you can reach out to me and I can help you with that too. But it's very, very easy to do. Cultivated Creativity is $39 a month shipped. Again, like I mentioned, you get up to $20 worth of product. It includes shipping um, and all those extra goodies that I told you. So if you're not doing it yet, why not? Do it. It's so much fun. Give it a try. I'm sure you will love it. Let me give you a flyby of this month's projects with Darling Details. Um, as I mentioned, four cards. So let's whip through those real quick. I want to also mention all of the cards in this club. The insides are detailed as well. Um, we don't skimp on that. I don't believe in naked insides. So you have everything you need to create on the inside too. So here's our first card. I love the color palette this month. It's so pretty. This second card is a fun little fun fold with a little surprise, surprise inside. I like to keep some surprises for club members. So we got this one here, which is super fun. It's got some dimension to it. And our fourth card is right here. And as you can see, these are beautifully detailed projects. All the design work is done for you, and you just get to sit down and have fun creating. Our bonus project this month is a cute little antibacterial holder box. And inside the box... Um, it might not be this flavor, <laughs> but you will get an antibacterial hand gel as well. And as I mentioned in last week's video, I got the good ones, guys. I got them from Bath and Body Works. I didn't get cheap antibacterials. <laughs> I got you nice ones. So that will also be included in your kit. So once again, this is Cultivated Creativity, guys. Four cards, one non-card project, 
something fun to eat, and your bonus project this month is another cool way to use the stamp set. Now, we always focus on some kind of technique in Cultivated Creativity. So we're doing a little work with masking this month. So um, showing a couple different techniques with masking and our bonus card really focuses on that. So again, you'll get the full tutorial for this. Um, and it just kind of, ha it's, it's really a cool way to use the stamp set to get some dimension on your project. So that's our bonus project. And like I said, that will be made for you. Um, and then you get all the materials to make the other stuff and you'll have the PDF for the bonus project. So if you want to put more together, you can do it. Um, so anywho, that's Cultivated Creativity. If you're not registered, please sign up. Couple days left to get this month's kit, guys. It closes on the 20th. So if you sign up after the 20th, you'll get next month's kit which is going to be awesome too. But if you want darling details, and I know you do, <laughs> make sure you sign up. It's super cool. All right. So that's Cultivated Creativity. And the next thing, we're going to get started on the card and I'm going to tell you about my event that's coming up at the end of the month too. This is the card we're going to make today. It is this beautiful oceanfront card. Terry says, I love those cards. Terry, sign up. <laughs> I give Terry a hard time. Terry, Terry, li you guys, Terry lives really close to me. Terry's a good friend of mine. Oh, Washington. That, Nicole, that's right. Nicole's in Washington too. All the Washington peeps. Hey, guys, let's give a shout out to all the Washington peeps today. Um, and everywhere else, everyone is. Um, <laughs> we've, got, we've got people from all over. So if you're watching live or the replay, give a shout out to where you are. I love to hear where you guys are visiting from. Okay. Here's our oceanfront card today. I love this stamp set, you guys. It's so easy to use. If you And this is one, it's not brand new, but I'm in kind of a beachy mood. So let's put this together and I'll show you how fun it is to create with this stamp set. This is in the Stampin' Up! annual catalog. We're gonna use some fun summer colors and we're just gonna put it together. Look at all these stamps, look at them all. Look at them all. <laughs> <laughs> we have all the stamp blocks in use. Hello, Belinda. Nice to see you, my friend. I don't know if we have enough room for everything. Ah, Diane's in Washington, too. <laughs> I guess I'll have to move them over here. I'm left-handed. I always pile everything over here, and I don't need to do that. <laughs> ah, GN is in Oregon, so Pacific Northwest. Represent. <laughs> all right, ocean front. Let's do it. Okay. All right. Oh, Robin says, I saw this on your blog. I'm excited to see you make it. You know, Robin, that's why we're making it today. Because I had, um, actually, I had a couple messages where people said, can you show me how to use that stamp set? Because it looks super intimidating. I've had it or I want to get it, but it looks like it's really hard to use. So that's why I'm doing it today. Um, in addition to the fact that it's a thousand degrees. <laughs> hey, Polly, North Carolina. Another North Carolina, Dia uh, Diana, sorry, not Di Diana, Diana. Sorry, I know your name, Diana. <laughs> All right. So exciting. I just love seeing where you guys are visiting from. Okay, so let's get crafting. All right, I have all the pieces. I die cut everything in advance, you guys, because I wanted to save a little time. Katie says, I love the stamp set. I do too. And the possibilities are really, really endless with this one. I think it's just really fun in different color palettes. Okay. So we're going to do our color palette today is pumpkin pie, coastal cabana, crumb cake, <laughs> and basic white. Um, we're also going to put some daffodil delight and old olive in there too, in the inks. Okay. So we have, we're going to start out, um, with our pumpkin pie card base that's four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half. Again, if you need measurements or a supply list for anything I'm using, you'll get that for free if you're on my email list. So make sure you're signed up. I did put that link um, in the description. It's in the description of the video. I also put it here in the comments as well. Okay, and then we have a piece of Coastal Cabana that's four by five and a quarter. And then I have a piece of crumb cake here that is three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. And I emboss this, I should take it out of the plastic, with the exposed brick 3D embossing folder. This is a newer embossing folder and I love this. What I really liked about the way this looked and hopefully I can move it up. Hi Nancy, nice to see you. I almost kind of thought the bricks almost looked like netting a little bit. So I kind of thought it worked with our little beachy theme. So we're just gonna go ahead and 
slap these layers together. I think that glue is empty. Let's use this one. <laughs> I have all these glue holders on my desk. Some are empty, some have glue in them. Let's see how we do today. How's everyone doing out there today? I can't believe it's Friday. I don't know where this week went, but I could use a couple days back. Anybody else? <laughs> if you guys have visited last week, you know we're fostering a puppy. Oh, she's a handful. She's a handful, you guys. <laughs> I forgot how much fun it was having a puppy. Let me tell you, shes I think she's 11 weeks now. Ooh, she's a little sass. Um, and she is a lot of fun. We're just putting these together. But she keeps me on my toes, and she's she's sleeping right now. She played hard with my dogs this morning, and puppies, puppies play hard, and then they crash hard. So I tried to time it today so she had some good play time, so she would be nice and tired by the time I did this Facebook Live. So she's actually having a little snooze in her kennel right now, just for everyone's sanity. <laughs> <laughs> she has started this new thing. She is mostly schnauzer and she has started this new thing when she wants your attention where she roos. And any of my schnauzer friends who might be watching this video, you know what I mean by a schnauzer roo because schnauzers go roo or arr, or it's like a little howl, but it's very distinctive to schnauzers. <laughs> so, um, and when you get her up in the morning, it's a roo fest. She's so loud. <laughs> So I'm like, I got to put her in her kennel. I was on a Zoom call the other day and she was in the background and all she kept, all you'd hear was woo, woo. And everybody thought it was hysterical, uh, but I'm sure it got annoying pretty quick. So, all right, we've got our card base together. Next up, we're going to use, I pre-cut the deckled rectangles. Guys, this is another set of dies that I think are a must have. If you don't have them, I just love that they give a little bit of detail um, around the edges. This is the second largest um, deckled rectangle. I'm moving things as I use them. I want to make sure to show everything. So we're going to stamp on our deckled rectangle. I'm going to show you how easy it is to put, use this stamp set. So you can go either way. You can work top to bottom or you can work bottom to top, however your brain works, I guess. <laughs> I actually, with this card, I like to work top to bottom because if I go a little too high on the top of the card, I can always add more sand to fill in the gaps. And I did it both ways. And when I worked bottom to top, sometimes I got a little too close to the top of the layer. So for me, for this um, particular layout, I like to work top to bottom. Because like I said, I can always add a little more sand to kind of bring it down a little bit. Um, so that was just kind of my tip to make it, hopefully help it work. Here, I did pull one of these. I'm pulling my silicone craft, not that this isn't a silicone craft mat. <laughs> This is a paper piercing mat. Um, <laughs> I'm tired, can you tell? Um, and with photopolymer stamps that are a little bit bigger, I like to use um, this because it gives you a little bit of cushion so you get a little bit more even ink coverage. So we're going to start with our top layer. And our, I'm going to move this out of the way because open ink pads and finished cards are not a good mix. So we're going to do Daffodil Delight and pumpkin pie. I thought this would make a nice sunset, kind of bright and fun. So we're going to start out by inking up the whole stamp in Daffodil Delight. I just re-inked this, so we're going to see how it goes. <laughs> it might be, oh, I already see it's a little heavy on the bottom. That's okay. You know what, guys? Hold on one quick second. Let me just do a test on this, just because I want to make sure it's not Okay, it's not too bad. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't goopy. I literally just re-inked it before <laughs> before I got started. And sometimes when you re-ink, you can use a little too much ink. Okay, so we have it re-inked. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sponge dauber. And I'm going to just kind of sponge on some of the pumpkin pie. I'm going to make it a little darker towards the bottom. It's kind of mimicking a sunset. 
So I'm just kind of working up. Another thing you could do, I, when I stamped this the first time, I stamped it all in daffodil, and then I only stamped half of it in pumpkin pie, and that gives a great effect too. So you could just stamp right into the ink pad if you wanted to. I just kind of liked that there wasn't like a definitive line across the image when I used my sponge dauber. So either way, whatever floats your boat, you can do. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to stamp a little bit from the top here. Boom. And that's going to give us kind of our look, looking like it's going into a sunset, or at least that's what it's supposed to mimic. And looks like my pumpkin pie is kind of inky too, but it's okay because I think it's going to dry a little bit lighter. And I noticed Nicole says, Yes, you have a lot of different options with this set. And even if you use the same colors, they all come out so differently. So depending on how much ink you put on here, you might get darker, you might get lighter. Here's a test run that I did on one. That's how I knew I needed to re-ink my daffodil to light. So this one's a little bit more muted. So you can kind of see here, we went a little bit more dark and bold, and this one's a little bit more light. So they're all going to come out different. And that's what I think is the beauty of this set. So good for bringing that up, Nicole. All right, so we've got that one out of the way. Now let's use our middle piece, which is going to be our water. And we're going to do this in Coastal Cabana. And this is one of those distinctive sets too. So it actually gives you the shading within the image. So hold on, I got to get right on top of it. Since these are photopolymer, it makes it easy because I can actually see right where I'm lining it up. Yes, look at that. And it almost kind of looks like ocean waves a little bit too. It's just kind of cool. It's just, I, I think I saw Elizabeth said, I love this stamp set. It makes me feel like I'm an artist watercoloring. Exactly. It just kind of does the work for you, um, which isn't that always fun when it comes to stamping? Um, okay. Our next layer is going to be the sand, and we're going to do crumb cake. Suppose you could even use a, if you wanted, maybe go pecan pie. You could go a little darker, I guess. I kind of like the crumb cake, though. This isn't, no, it's this way. <laughs> I don't know why I'm second guessing myself. I already put this card together. Um, now I'm not too current concerned if this lines up in this area right here because we're going to cover that up with the sentiment. So I'm just going to stamp down. Okay and as you can see right here I don't have it lining up perfectly and that's okay because we're going to put our sentiment there. So it's kind of intentional. I wanted to bring it down a little bit more to kind of fill up the whole deckled rectangle. Oh don't close this yet. We're not done. We're not done. We need some sand. Okay, so now we're going to take our little sandy. This is a great set if you need a good sandy image. <laughs> and we're just going to stamp some full strength, some off once. And go ahead and twist your stamp so it doesn't look like it's repetitive in all the same directions. Fill some in. A little more there. There we go. <laughs> so as I mentioned, you can always bring the sand down past the image. Crumb cake does, um, it actually will dry a little bit lighter too. So that's kind of another thing that I really like about crumb cake. It's probably one of the best basic neutral stamp sets, I think. <laughs> Hi, Anne Margrethe. She says she loves the stamp set too. Okay, so now we're going to do some little seagrass just to complete our little image. And I'm doing these in old olive. You could pick another green if you want to. I initially used um, granny apple green. It was a little too bright. I felt like it almost needed like a shadow since the sun was setting. I thought it was a little bit more of a silhouette look. That's why I went with old olive. And I'll stamp the other one right here. And that's it. You made a beach scene. How easy is that? And as I mentioned, it doesn't matter if it looks a little junky right here because we're going to cover that up. So actually, I didn't do too bad. I kind of lined the grass up so 
this actually is that actually is better than I stamped my original <laughs> so I'm kind of happy with that now my sentiment now this stamp set the only thing that it doesn't have are sentiments so um I had to go and search through to find the perfect sentiment and I found it in the let's go shopping set wish you were here perfect right um so it's always fun to kind of go on a scavenger hunt to try and find stamp or your coordinating sentiments and I am going to use this little label which is the right side up this is the right side up from bum 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 let me show ya where is it here it is <laughs> I pull everything just in case Patricia says she grew up on, on Long Island the only thing she misses is the beach Aww. <laughs> The All That Dies. I love some of the labels in here, some of the little background pieces and banners. This is another really good set. But I like this oval because it has kind of a raised edge around it. And it looks like I might have got some pumpkin pie on there. I did. We're going to have to cut another one real quick, guys. I smeared some ink on there. As we do in our craft rooms, right? So here, I'm not even going to put the die cutting machine in the video. I'm just going to cut another one really fast. Since I'm giving this card away, I just cannot let it <laughs> have smeared ink on it. Oh, well, I tried to be prepared, but ink happens, right? We'll do another one. All right. Put that on my little magnet board. We'll clean that up later. Okay, much better. No ink, no ink on that one. So we're going to use our Wish You Were Here. This could be a birthday card. It could be a thinking of you card, a just hello card. It could be anything you want it to be. So. And I'm going to do that in Old Olive too. The reason I did it in Old Olive is I always like to share this with you guys if, if you like hearing it. Um, if you don't, then... Just listen anyway, it's fine. <laughs> but I like to kind of do things in threes. Um, so I have my grass, grass, and then a third old olive here. So it kind of creates a trio of things. If you visited me before, I like to do things in odd numbers and I like to kind of create a triangular look sometimes. So um, that's my thought process behind the design. I know some people like hearing that. <laughs> Ah, Nancy says, if you have a gap, make it sea foam. I do that intentionally. That's true. And Nancy, Nancy, I think you live in Florida, so you know all about sea foam. <laughs> so, all right. So here we go. We have our scene. We have our cute little, um, isn't this like the perfect little oval? It's like the perfect tiny oval. And look at how it has that just tiny bit of detail around the edges. I like it a lot. It just has a little bit of something, something. Um, here it is. We're going to do linen thread. I made one in advance, but I'm going to show you how I made it. So I'm going to make a faux bow, a faux double bow in linen, linen thread around this. So I'm going to start by taking my linen thread, putting using my middle finger, I'm going to use these three fingers. I'm going to have a little tail here. I'm going to wrap it around once, twice, and then have my other little tail on this side. And then when I bring it off... I'm going to be able to put it on the back of my um, little label as like a faux bow. I'm going to put my adhesive in the middle and then have my little tails. And by doing it that way, I'm able to not have that knot there. And it makes it so it can actually go on my card and it doesn't add too much extra dimension behind it. So I'm going to put a little adhesive on the back. I went ahead and made one and I just put it, I put a Stampin' Dimensional piece over the top of it to hold it in place. So I put a little adhesive on the back here to stick everything down. And, ta-da, perfect little faux bow. You can kind of fluff it out a little bit. But by doing it that way, uh, you don't have that little knot in the middle that makes it super chunky and um, can make you have to use a second dimensional sometimes. So the faux bow is where it's at. All right, we're going to move this down a little bit. Still see a little bit of our sand. 
And then we have our fun little, <laughs> I saw somebody said, the humid state. Yes, it is the humid state. <laughs> Okay, so there you go. And like I said, you can kind of floof it as much as you want to floof it um, and fan it out a little bit. Or you can just, you can leave your tails as long or as short as you want them. I just thought it kind of looked like, I don't know, like a little net. And it just kind of worked with our, now they're not even. Hold on. <laughs> do you guys ever do that? You cut one and then the other's too short and then you have to go back and cut the, cut the other one. <laughs> and then they all get too short and then you have to rip it off and start over again. <laughs> Just me? Okay. <laughs> okay, so here we go. We have our fun little beach scene. Let's put this on our card, embellish it, and then let's do something on the inside. I didn't do anything on the inside of my card, so I guess we're going to have to put that together. I lost the base. Oh, look at that, guys. I almost did it upside down. Who does that? Give me a, a like or a heart if you do that all the time or occasionally or <laughs> to me once is enough in your craft room. I, I have done this, with, especially when I make swaps, you guys, if I'm not paying attention, I'll assemble all my card fronts and my cards <laughs> send like that. So always double check to make sure your card's going in the right direction. <laughs> Don't make that mistake. Although it just makes them unique. The recipient can be like, hey, this is a unique fold and you can go, yeah, it's new. It's all the rage in card making right now. <laughs> all the cool kids are doing it. <laughs> and yes, this is entirely too many dimensionals. I don't care. <laughs> and you shouldn't either. If you want to use less than this, use less than this. <laughs> okay, while we're, while we're slapping this down and peeling dimensional backings, I want to tell you guys about Maker's Mojo. I have an online creative escape coming up at the end of this month. It's awesome, you guys. It is a quarterly event that I do with four other Stampin' Up! demonstrators. It is chock full of creativity. If you need some Stampin' Mojo, you guys are going to love this event. It's a day and a half. We do it on Friday the 28th, Saturday the 29th, live. You can't make it live? Don't worry. Everything's recorded for you. You'll have all the content. And it is 10 stamping presentations. We are going to have techniques, fun folds, 3D projects, um, lots of tips and tricks. It is amazing. Um, these events are so much fun, and there's tons of creative inspiration. You will get a PDF tutorial for everything we show. And we don't do necessarily a... Um, like it's not intended to be a craft along event. We can, what we do is we'll do a technique or a fold. What we encourage you to use is not necessarily what we're using. We want you to use what you have. So if you have what we're using, great. You will get a preliminary PDF. So if you do want to craft in advance, you get that about a week in advance. Um, but you can easily take anything that we're doing and use exactly what you're doing or use exactly what you have. Uh, Elizabeth, that I think I just answered your question. So no, you don't get a list in advance. It's not intended to be that kind of event. We want to share with you techniques and ideas because we don't want you to um, worry about having all the things that we use. We want you to use what you have in your craft room. So I'm sure you have stamps and dies and DSP and you can make exactly what we're making just change up the patterns. And we do have, you can share your projects too. We have prizes in the event. Um, we have lots of prizes um, this round. And we're actually already having fun in, um, in our Facebook group. It's open right now. So we do that a little bit early where we get in there and um, we have opportunities for prizes, tells you a little bit about how the event runs. Now, if you want information about Makers Mojo, the link is in the description of this video. If you click on the link, it'll take you to my blog. It'll tell you all about the event. It has a Q and A section and also the link to register. So check it out. I think you guys will love it. I think, I think Polly, was it you? Yep. If you haven't registered, you need to. It's awesome. Thanks, Polly. <laughs> Polly's already registered, so you should be too. Um, it's a lot of fun, and it's just so much creative inspiration. And Polly can attest. It's a great way for you to use what's in your craft room. All right. Let me... Um, Oh, and Elizabeth says, check the price. It's $45. Um, it's $45 US. If you're anywhere in the world, you can register because... Um, it's it's basically $45 for two days worth of amazing content. You get 10 chock full PDF tutorials 
And it's not only the project that we make, but it's also alternatives. And anybody who's attended Makers Mojo can also attest, it's a lot of alternative projects, you guys. There's a lot of content. Um, so we'll make, say maybe I make a card with my project with Zoo Crew. I may show you four alternatives with four other stamp sets, three or four I don't know how many. <laughs> I'm not going to speak for everybody's alternative numbers, um, but it's multiple alternatives. I'm putting some pearls on here to finish it up. Um, a little trio of iridescent pearls because beach goes with pearls, right? And we just need a little something, something. Okay. All right. Now, I guess in the inside, we got to do something. That's why I left all these stamps out. So I've got a piece of basic white, four by five and a quarter. I think we're gonna do some sand. Put a little scrap down there. We'll do some sand and some beach grass. How does that sound? I don't think I can do another full beach scene in here. So we'll just pop a little sand in there. Is this sand? This is sand. Okay. Just kinda pop that on the bottom. Do a little bit of our speckled sand. Flip it. There we go. And then, oh no, uh-oh. Let's hope our beach grass covers up that ink smear. <laughs> Is there a, I think there's a thicker beach grass in here. This one, will this cover up our ink smear? Okay, we're busting out the big guns, guys. We gotta fix an ink smear. So, <laughs> we're gonna bust out a different seagrass. How's that? So we'll do some old olive and strategically place that over our ink smear. <laughs> I just missed it. I think it's less noticeable though. It's okay. Can we do this one? Yes. Let's do this one stamped off once. <laughs> Let's just keep adding things until we, um, until we cover the ink smear. I'm going to stamp it off once. Perfect. I think that worked because <laughs> I was running out of things to stamp. <laughs> Plus it adds a little bit of color dimension too. So what do you think? I was like, I'm running out of things to stamp, guys. I'm hoping we get it covered. So, and I'm not going to put a sentiment in here because I just think it's, you know, there's so many different ways you can do that. So I actually like how that came out, oddly enough. And the ink smear almost looks like it's part of the seagrass. So shh, if you watch this video, you know, but nobody else will know. All right. <laughs> Polly says ink smears make you more creative or more frustrated. I know. Let's see, Elizabeth says, can you do a project with the other beach set with seagulls or a ship, please? You know what, I have one real close, Elizabeth. I'm gonna grab it, hold on. It does use some retired paper. However, this is actually one of my projects from uh, Maker's Mojo presentation, if you want a little preview. We did this one here. And if you don't have this paper, you could easily stamp some background paper and do like an alcohol ink background. So if you don't have this DSP, this is the other, um, and I'm so sorry you asked and I honestly don't remember. It's right there, Seaside something. <laughs> I have this Seaside Bay, Seaside Bay. I had to step over my lights. <laughs> so here's a little, Here's a little preview with Seaside Bay and um, some fun little ribbon techniques in the background. I did a big presentation last Maker's Mojo on ribbon techniques. So um, that's just a preview of one of the things, one of the things that we could do in the event. Obviously, I won't be doing it this event, <laughs> but because I did it last time, but. But I like that stamp set a lot and I want to use it more often. So we'll have to do that one again. Is this the one we did today? I can't remember which one we did today and which one's the original. Well, neither of them have an inside, so this will work. Oh, it's pretty. I like how it came out. Perfect. 
I almost want to wish there, I wish there was a little water in there, but I, it would just be too big. And there you go, guys. We made a beachy card today using Oceanfront. What do you think? Do you love it? And here are two different variations. You can see here, I had just re-inked my pad. So you can see here how I have a little bit more of a solid image, whereas this one, um, it wasn't that the pad didn't needed to be re-inked, but it was a little bit more muted. So you can kind of see the differences in the stamps. They all look a little bit different when you stamp them. So there you go. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining today, guys. And if you haven't signed up, for Club or Makers Mojo, check out the links in the description of the video. Um, club registration closes on the 20th, and you can sign up for Makers Mojo. The last day is the 27th, but you don't want to wait till the last minute if you're interested in signing up because you the prize opportunities, you have the most prize opportunity chances right now. We are doing, um, we do 10 of the prize opportunities in advance. Um, of the event getting started. So just to kind of keep that in mind too. So if you're thinking about it, check it out. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and send me a message. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me for Facebook Friday. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for being here today. And um, if you're not signed up for my newsletter, um, please do so. Tomorrow afternoon, I will send out my weekly newsletter um, with all of those links I talked about and also a project sheet for this card and the project sheet for last week's card. All right, hope y'all take care. Have a great weekend. Stay cool out there, and we'll see you next week on Facebook Friday. Bye, everyone.